Well, here she is, Joey Heatherton. George McSanna, the town executive at our station, said that you don't wear makeup. And it's true, and you're so beautiful, Joey. Oh, you're so nice. So you're on the cover of TV Guide this week. Oh, and really, she is a doll. Well, thank y you. You know, um, Pete Boyle is also an account executive at WHIO, and his father, Dr. Boyle, mm. lives across the street from your parents. Yes. Dr. Boyle? Dr. Boyle is Pete Boyle's father. I have to call my mom and dad. Have They're to coming call. in. Are they coming in for the show? Mm hmm Wonderful. Of course, now, you come from a show biz background, don't you? Your okay. father, of course, is famous. My dad and my mother was in the theater, and my father still is in the business. Of course, my mother gave up her career when she married. But, uh, yeah, but they never encouraged me to go in. Didn't they really, Joey? No, they didn't. I went to... Uh, St. Agnes Academy, and I started college, and they insisted that I complete my education. That was You know, smart. that's it. But I got ahead of the game. <laughs> I, I, I went into The Sound of Music when I was about 13 years old, and uh, Richard Rogers was the one who, um, well, he convinced my parents that I should go into the business. Well, you were that great. Oh, I didn't mean that. <laughs> no, but, but, but it's true. But can you lead any kind of a normal life, Joey? With the schedule that you have. Oh, sure. Are you kidding? Of course. My, uh, my secretary is a, a gal. Uh, we grew up together. Uh, we went to school first grade. First grade to high school. Oh, Normal life, wonderful. yeah. And, and she travels with you all the time? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Joey, I want to talk about your show because we carry uh, the Gold Diggers on Channel 7 every Tuesday at oh, 10 o'clock. Yes, I want to ask you about Frank Sinatra. Uh, Junior, how is he to work with? Oh, he's adorable. Is he? He's a lot of fun. He had a wonderful time. How about Paul Lynn? Oh! Is he, is he just as funny? He's funnier. Is oh, he really? He's, a, he's really a naturally funny person. He's the funniest man in the world. Oh, he, he really strikes me funny. And it's Barbara Heller. Nice person, too. We have a wonderful cast. I bet you have Stanley fun. Stanley Myron Handelman and Barbara Heller. Now, he's very young, isn't he? Stanley. Stanley? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stanley is a... Uh, Pretty young. He's so funny. Is he? We had a wonderful time. I keep on thinking that when we made the show last month, or a couple of months ago, that that was the summer, you know, because it was a summer show. Mm hmm And this is like the fall, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, taping your shows, it is, it's confusing, mm -hmm. isn't it? Well, not really, but I think of it as the summer show, and this is, no, this is summer. <laughs> of course, now you're appearing in Dayton, in Can Can. Is this your first time in Can Can? First time in Can Can, yes. Mm -hmm. Are you enjoying your part? Oh, I love it. I love well, it. We're thrilled, and the fellows, you know, everybody wants to meet Joey Heatherton. They're all excited about your being here. Oh, thank you. Joey, uh, tell me, uh, what are you going to be doing after Can Can? After Can Can? Can Can. <laughs> You're going to be doing it again? <laughs> I'm going to do Can Can up until September, and then I'm going out to the coast, and I'm going to do a Dean Martin show and the Hollywood Palace. And then I might go to Europe for something exciting. And, Can't tell us uh, what? No, I never do. <laughs> well, that's good. And so you know definitely what you're going to be doing. I think that's smart. Well, Joy, um, tell us a little bit now about the part in Can Can, the part that you play. About Claudine? Mm hmm Well, it's, uh, Claudine is uh, a laundress. Uh, do you know? The, yes, I've seen it. I love the show. Typical Toulouse Trek, you know, gal. And she's a dancer. In a, uh, in a club, and uh, she has a future ahead of her, and she's in love with this crazy nut. He doesn't want her to have a career. I don't want to tell her anything. <laughs> I don't want everybody. <laughs> you want everyone to come and see you. Yeah. And you'll be here all week through Sunday, and, of course, there are two matinees on Saturday and Sunday at 2.30. Right. Then there's an early show at 7.30 on Sunday evening That's so right. that uh, folks can get home and, and get to bed early. But how about opening night? Is this kind of uh, exciting for you? Oh, yeah. Opening nights for me are always exciting. What do you do? Now, what do you do when you're opening? Do you have special things, a ritual that you go through? Uh, well, I usually get the butterflies. That's the ritual. Yeah. But you're not, you're not superstitious? Superstitious? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> not, not really. <laughs> but everyone come down and see Joey Heatherton. Joey, it was so nice to visit with you. Thank you. And you're so real nice to doll. meet you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.
Karen Morrow, you are such a delight. Oh, you're you and Karen. We're so thrilled to have you here. This is your first yes, visit, isn't it? Yes, my first visit to Dayton, my first time with the Kenley Players, and uh, it's a treat. It really is. I don't feel like I'm doing summer stock. I feel like I'm doing a pre-Broadway tryout or something because everybody treats us as though we're uh, as though we're first class, you know. Well, so, you listen, well, you are. It's a little different than just being summer stock. It's you, lovely. You and Fritzy, where I don't know where Fritzy, Fritzy is. Oh, he's in trouble. Your doggy. He's so in he, big trouble. <laughs> he's in big trouble. <laughs> he's loose someplace. Uh, yeah. Karen, you know, we feel like we know you because of seeing you on the Merv Griffin show. Aww. And you were a regular. You started yes. with him, didn't you? Yes. I, when he had an afternoon show for NBC, that was about five years ago, I was brand fresh new and kind of dolly dimples. And I started with uh, Merv, and then he went to his nighttime show. You, you probably get him in the afternoon. No, we, we do now. Oh, I mm -hmm. see. Well, in New York, of course, he's the nighttime show. And uh, I've been with him ever since the beginning of that. I did his pilot, as it were, uh, for that show. What do so we really been, like? Merv is a very funny, lovable bear. He's just a <laughs> little bear, and his wife is crazy, just crazy. And um, he's just a lovely guy, you know, and he believes very, very much in helping everybody out and doing nice things for people. And if he has favorites, he sticks with them. And uh, regardless of what someone else, you know, the, the producer maybe doesn't like somebody, Merv will always stick he's up loyal. for him. Absolutely. How about Arthur Treacher? Oh, what a nice... <laughs> talk about bears. Oh, what a nice man. He has... The marvelous thing about Arthur is that he has no axe to grind. You see, he's not in it for personal glory, or he's not interested in stepping on anybody's toes. He's just there, and he says something, and it's usually devastating. <laughs> and he's a charming man, just charming. It's a lovely atmosphere. I want to talk about your background a little bit. Because you, <laughs> no, you started out to yeah. be a school teacher. Yes. Yes. And and you've really only been uh, in the theater now for, what, about eight years? Yes. Then? Yes, about eight years, I'd say legally. In other legally. words, I'm, I moved to New York about uh, seven and a half years ago. But I was teaching school at the same time uh, that I was performing, my first year of performing. Uh, and I was getting $2 a performance and making maybe $5 a day teaching. That's about it at that time. And we all used to get together and correct my papers backstage. Good night, eh? Oh, yes, I'd pass out all the little things, and the girls would sit with the red pencils, and we'd call off the answers. You'd detect the things and make out the report cards. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. It was the worst job of acting I ever did. And I had to because I wasn't really trained to teach school. I was trained to dance and sing. And that was your folks, things. of course, who come from a show yes, business background, Yes, I know that. Too. <laughs> well, you know, oh, doing my homework. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Yes, they were, but they were the Chicago Opera Company, so it was a different type of a thing, you know. All I knew was I was supposed to sing loud and be heard and understood. And then someone said, oh, gee, you're a belter. And I said, oh, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> I am. And I gave up the, the teaching profession very easily and very quickly and, uh, and, have, and have been doing this. I, I, bet they up my heels. I bet they loved you, though, Karen. I don't <laughs> know. I don't know. I, I was entirely different then. I mean, I looked different. And uh, uh, I, oh, dumb, dumb Dora. I mean, I was just so dumb and awful. and. And uh, just silly. I didn't know what to say or do all day. I had short red hair. And, and uh, now, now they don't recognize me, you know. Oh, really? No, no. No, they don't. Well, you've done so many great shows in New York. No, and we're so thrilled to have Karen Morrow here with us. Come down and see her in Can Can. Oh, please. She'll be yes. here through Sunday with yes. two matinees, Saturday. Yes. And Handsome Sunday. men, pretty ladies. Oh, Ooh. delicious. I'm real anxious to see you. Karen Morrow, thank you very much thank for being with us. Thank you very much, Betty. Delight. Thank you. Bye-bye.